The Coretta Coretta loggerhead and Chelonia midas green sea turtles are the only two sea turtle species nesting on Turkish beaches. They are common throughout the Mediterranean countries like Turkey. Considering 300 sea turtles nest annually on Dalian beach alone, it is easy to understand the importance of the Turkish and Mediterranean coastlines for their nesting. Tens of thousands of tourists enjoy Iztuzu Dalian beach, one of the most unique Mediterranean beaches with its fine white sand and clear waters. The sea turtles have been nesting here for millions of years. They may be entangled in fishing nets, collide with boats or boat propellers. Thus, Turkey needs a treatment and rehab center for the turtles. Dalian Sea Turtle Research, Rescue and Rehabilitation Center protects and studies these special guests of the beach. The center is named Dekamer in short. The goals of the center are protection of the nests along Dalian Beach, treatment and rehab of the sick or injured sea turtles, and their release back into the wild. These turtles start coming to Iztuzu Beach every April. When the sea turtles come ashore to lay eggs, the Dekamer field work starts. In order to maintain skin moisture, sea turtles lay eggs at night. An adult female finds an appropriate place in the sand to nest. Using her rear legs like a shovel, a female digs a 50 to 60 centimeter deep hole to lay her eggs. The Dekamer team places an electronic temperature recorder in some of the nests to determine the hatchling's gender. Female hatchlings are more likely to develop at around 32 degrees, where males are more likely to do so at around 26 degrees. After laying approximately 70 to 100 eggs, the female begins to close the nest. Sea turtles take great care in camouflaging the nest. This is instinctive behavior of sea turtles to protect the nest from predators. After an hour or so of hard work, the female returns to the sea. Approximately two months later, the baby turtles hatch and head to the sea like their mothers. What characterizes Iztuzu Beach is the presence of fresh water on one side and seawater on the other. There are many large and small lakes behind the beach. Dekamea is located right next to Lake Iztuzu. Here, sea turtles are treated and rehabilitated in convalescence pools. Visitors receive information about the center and its patients as the team works to heal the injured sea turtles. Staff and volunteers are busy at Dekamea. Fishermen and sensitive citizens know of the center, which is relatively new, and contact it to report sick or injured turtles. Fishermen are the ones encountering the sea turtles most often. As sea turtles attempt to eat the fish captured in the fishing nets, they get entangled and choke. So, they are not in such good terms with the fishermen. Often, when fishermen find unconscious sea turtles entangled in their nets, they mistakenly believe that the turtles are dead and release them back to the sea. As a result, they drown and die. Instead, Fishermen should position the unconscious sea turtle head down, tail up on the boats and place a wet towel over their shells to keep them cool and moist under the sun. Once fishermen inform the Dekamer team, they attend to the injured sea turtle. Annually, around 20 injured sea turtle cases are reported to Dekamer. Ali Isan Budaja from Fetier contacted Dekamer to report a sea turtle washed up on the shore. Meryem Tekin and Ismail Tufan of Dekamer travelled to Fetier to rescue the injured sea turtle. It is a green sea turtle. The team performs an initial examination before care at the centre. They check for wounds or missing body parts. 
They also check eye reflexes and try to determine its gender. The turtle is exhausted and very weak. It is obvious that she has not eaten anything for a long time. It is put on vitamins and painkillers and immediately transferred to the center. Ali Isan Budaja, who found the turtle on a beach in Fethiye, names her Fethiye. As soon as Fethiye arrives at the center, she is x-rayed. There is something abnormal with her shell and the experts need to detect the problem. Blood samples are taken and analyzed. GDEM from the Decamere team checks the results. As Fetier continues to receive treatment, experts notice that she is always floating in the convalescent pool. The X-ray reveals that the rear part of Fetier's shell was thicker than the front. The center determines that Fetier had an accident. Her shell was broken and not well amalgamated, trapping some air underneath the shell. Fetier had been unable to feed well due to failure in diving. So, she was washed ashore due to exhaustion. Fetier is lucky to have been found by a person who had awareness to contact Decamer. Sometimes more serious injuries can occur. Ekodost is a green turtle brought from Kushadasa. She is around 30 to 35 years old. A fishing line entangled her front right paddle. There are dead tissues and no blood circulation in her paddle. It should be amputated. Such operations are carried out in the experimental research unit of Pamukkale University Medical Faculty. After a successful operation, her paddle is amputated and the whole body infection is prevented. Weeks pass. Sea turtle hatchlings start coming out of their nests in July. The number of volunteers on the night patrols increase. All night they will excavate the nests along the beach where most of the hatchlings have already emerged and collect data. Team leader Mujahid Sechme and his friends work at a nest. The hatchlings hatched from their eggs a few days ago and headed towards the sea. The team first uncages the nest and excavates it. They remove sand from the nest very carefully as there still may be hatchlings in the nest of 50 centimeters deep. The team's goal is to rescue any remaining hatchlings. Finally, they find the hatchlings that were trapped within the deepest portion of the nest. These hatchlings, weak and exhausted, were unable to reach the surface. They have to dig through sand of 50 to 60 centimeters to reach the surface. Mujahid removes the hatchlings and places them in a bucket. The team then counts and recalls the number of empty eggshells. Then they measure the depth and the diameter of the nest. Valuable data is collected and replicated for another 300 nests on the beach. The team witnesses the emergence of baby sea turtles as they walk towards another nest to be opened. Once out of their eggs, hatchlings do not immediately emerge from their sandy nests, but instead stay under 20 to 30 centimeters of sand for a couple of days. First, their yolk sacs must fall off and the hatchlings must dig their way out from the underneath the sand. A hatchling's ability to breathe under 20 to 30 centimeters of sand proves the success of the adult female carettas in nest making. Hatchlings emerge from the nest either one by one or in groups, which mean that all the hatchlings in one nest might not emerge during the same night. It might take three or four nights for all hatchlings to leave the nest. There is a strategic reason for hatchlings to emerge from the nest at night. Heat. The sun scorches the beach all day but the sand becomes cool at night. In addition, the hatchlings avoid dehydration as they make their way to the sea. 
Decomare volunteers are not the only ones who wait for the baby sea turtles to hatch. One morning, the team witnesses something interesting on the way back to the centre. Instead of foxes as common predators, this time a badger has come to eat the sea turtle eggs. The biter is sometimes bitten. The badger was unable to reach the eggs due to the protective cage, but trapped under the cage. The team strives to free the badger, unsuccessfully with a stick. A team member finally removes the protective cage by hand. It is difficult to detangle the badger from the cage, but finally he is freed. Ferhat is another patient at the centre. He was brought from Bodrum with the right part of his shell broken. Exactly what's caused this wound is difficult to tell. He has some scratches underneath which possibly would show an indication that he's been pushed up or crushed up against the rocks, whether it was during storms or whether a boat or another large object has pushed him up against the rocks. It's, it's difficult to tell. Professor Jakub Kaska, Meriam Tekin and Erdi Jan examine Fairhat's broken shell. All the dead tissues and all the other uh, infection part of it, you have to clear it. Kaplumbağa en kısa sürede buraya getiriyoruz. Normal kan tekkikleri yapılıyor, röntgen filmi çekiliyor ve e, uygun görülen antibiyotik tedavisi, vitamin ve serumlarıyla başlayan bir tedavi sürecinde kaplumbağanın genel bir pansumanı yapılıyor, genel bir temizliği yapılıyor ve günlük olarak bundan sonra iyileşene kadar ilaçları ve beslenmesi devamlı bir şekilde kontrol ediliyor. Ancak kaplumbağaların tedavisi böyle biz insanlardaki gibi hemen 3-5 gün veya 5-10 günde tamamlanmıyor. Bu söylediğimiz süreç en az 5-6 ayı e, alan bir süreç. Hatta bazı kaplumbağalar için 2 yılı süren bir tedavi süreci de oluyordu. Ferhat is not eating anything. The team at the center tries to understand the cause. Ferhat was x-rayed and blood tests were completed. The team waits for the results. Meryem and Erdi clean his wound carefully. The wound is quite serious. The infection may reach his internal organs. So, it is essential for it to be cleaned and dressed as soon as possible. They seal the wound with a special resin to repel water. Thus, further infection is prevented. Thousands of Turkish and foreign tourists coming to enjoy the sea and the sand also visit the centre. The centre welcomes 400 to 500 visitors a day in summer. Visitors can see recovering sea turtles in close, in convalescent pools. The centre's staff and volunteers share the stories of the recovering turtles with the visitors. They introduce the aims and efforts of the centre and provide information on sea turtles both in Turkish and English. Children in particular are drawn to seeing these animals up close. Visitors enjoy learning that they do not see a lot of jellyfish in Iztuzu because the sea turtles feed on jellyfish. On the other hand, visitors learn that they should not throw plastic bags into the sea due to their resemblance with jellyfish. These plastic bags can cause sea turtles to suffocate when they mistake them for jellyfish and eat them. My name's Tracy from England and we came here last year and we were very sorry to hear that Denise had died. Um, but uh, Nazim looks much better, her head. And we think you do very good work. And we think there should be cages on the propellers. And that all boats should have to do it. And that tour companies should only use those boats. While leaving the centre, visitors who believe in the centre's mission and works willingly make donations. Many of them write comments in the guest book as well.
Kaplumbağalar benim çok hoşuma gitti. Kaplumbağaları korumak için elimden geleni yapacağım. I'm Bill Smith from Manchester, England. I can see what a fantastic job they are doing for the turtles. Makes me feel up talking about it like you know so. The cleaning and maintenance of the pool starts at the end of each day. Biologist Chi Dem measures the salinity of the seawater. The salinity of the seawater may decrease due to fresh water mixing with it. This can negatively impact the recovering turtles in the pools. Salt is added to increase the salinity to the normal amount. The water in the pools should be replaced daily. Volunteers empty the water from the pools and then clean them. They then refill the pools with seawater. We move the turtles daily um, into new tanks. So we have to wash them out um, with detergent. We also disinfect them. Um, we have to wash them out with fresh water first and then we have to bring all the seawater up. The team examines the recent x-rays of Fairhap. Their expectations are confirmed. Fairhat had swallowed a hook that got stuck in his throat. The hook must be removed immediately. Professor Jakub Kaska leads the operation. Fairhat needs to be restrained for surgery. Even under anesthesia, sea turtles are very strong animals. A wrong move could cause serious damage. The team looks for the hook carefully. They have to keep Fairhut's strong mouth open so that they can work easily. After a risky operation, the hook is removed. Orta böyle çok küçük olunca e, mide asiti veya ağız içindeki asitler bunu çürütüyor zaten. Zaman içerisinde kendisi de atıp gidebiliyor ama daha büyük oltalar vardı daha önceki hayvanlardan çıkan onları muhakkak Echo Dost healed in three months, but her rehabilitation in the diving tanks took another nine months. Today she goes back to where she came from. She can survive with one paddle. She even starts feeding as soon as she is released. By saving Ekodost, hundreds of new baby turtles are saved. The rehabilitation of entreated turtles starts. They have to survive by themselves when they get back to the sea. They should learn how to eat live food and dive to the bottom of the convalescent tanks without help. This long rehabilitation process continues until they are released back into the sea. The centre also tracks the rehabilitated sea turtles via satellite transmitters. Today, satellite transmitters will be placed on four sea turtles having completed the treatment. The experts and volunteers sand and clean the shell of the turtles to be released. The satellite transmitters will be glued onto the turtle shells and will send data to the center at least for a year. Thus, it must be glued tightly on the shell. They use a special glue to secure the transmitter. This tracking device not only measures the success of the rehabilitation, but also provides data to scientists about sea turtles feeding, nesting and migration routes. It helps us learn more about the biology of the turtles and helps us better protect them. The turtles rehabilitated and released by Dekomer have traveled to Tunisia, Libya, Egypt, Israel, Syria and Cyprus, but always return to Iztuzu to feed and nest. This is the last day for them at the center. They will reunite with the Mediterranean Sea soon. 
A short ceremony is held for the release of the turtles. Everyone is excited to see sea turtles being brought to the beach. Tourists, local residents, staff of the Ministry of the Environment and Urbanization, the Ministry of Forestry and Water Affairs, the Department of Nature Conservation and National Parks and Children, all are ready for the ceremony. These turtles will send data for a year from wherever they go. This satellite tracking alone shows the importance of Iztuzu Beach for the life cycle of sea turtles. They say goodbye to Dalian for now, to return again next year for nesting, just like the way they have been doing for millions of years.